Minister Kinnock, for uh, Dr. Timothy's speech. And I hope that everyone in the audience knows where that speech came from. I think it came straight to the Minister's heart. The Minister and I share a real, one real strong belief, and that is that education is the key to a good life. That education for every child is important. And I want to thank you for your passion you bring to this, for the open those can be down to attention to early childhood care and other things, and I uh, acknowledge uh, your own personal passion and commitment. And I say to this audience that without personal passion and commitment, nothing changes. Nothing changes at all. And either you have that or you don't, and if you don't, then sitting here is really a waste of time. So I'm really inviting you to share the Minister's passion and commitment and to make this reconciliation action plan uh, what it would be. Thank you, Tim, for the effort the Commission's made to address this. It's been terrific, and I thank everybody who's been involved in it. Uh, some of you have heard this speak before, but I'm a emotional person, easily moved to tears. And I'm quite emotional this morning, because I live my life in the school. And they offered to let me off speaking, but I didn't want to. Last night I had dinner with my wife, some of my brothers, my nephew, my son, and I was struck yet again by the fantastic lives we all had. And we owe those fantastic lives to two things. We owe them to our families, our parents, mothers, parents. But everything else outside that uh, is secondary with Catholic education system. My whole family is a product of that system. I think back to my early convent days at the Sacred Heart in North Perth. As a three or four year old, I started school really early because I missed my big sister. Uh, I think my current grandchildren in St. Thomas's Parish School. My granddaughter at John III. My own school days at St. Patrick's with Brown Joseph's in Kensington. But I know. Fantastic life that I've had. Happy, engaged, community engaged, wonderful life has come from that passion. Three of my sisters have taught. My brother John, now judge, he's taught. I taught. We're a family of teachers, and I'm talking to that. So I have to put me all these people I regard as the key people. Having a good society, the sort of Australia that I want. The truth is that most Australians get that, and you deliver it in spades to a large proportion of your students. But it's fair to say that the comp with every other institution in Australia, the people that we've got the least successful, and you're, I think, less to be done with this process than most, we are least successful in incorporating Aboriginal people into that good Australian life. It's been a strange aspect of our society. And it's fantastic that, as the Minister has said, we've now got this focus where hundreds of organisations are saying we want to part and play and change it. But no institution can be more important to change that than you. Because you have that unique capacity to engage with the next generation of children. The current generation are being jailed in numbers defy world records. We've got about 1,300 kids, I think, in our body part of our foundation. We've been in the partnership with the previous staff, and I'm so grateful to Peter for the wonderful partnership we share. I think we've now got well, hundreds and hundreds of kids through year 12 from schools which have never graduated kids in year 12. We've always said about 30% go to university, 30% go to trade, and 30% of jobs. But we've just had a survey of all our students. Found that 62% of kids have gone to our course and university graduation. Now that's pretty remarkable. You think to be brought to schools like Carrara, Port Hedland, John Price, Union, places like your system, uh, wonderful schools, Kiara, Hackham Park. There are so many of them. This is all doable, ladies and gentlemen, but we haven't done it. We haven't done it. 
And now we have kids, the hundreds and hundreds of kids that have been through our courses, have been successful at school, have been in trouble with the law. Some of them have been in trouble with the law before they joined us. That's the interesting thing. But you hold in your hands the transformational capacity. No one else has. But it only happens if you make it happen. Last night I was in a wonderful concert at the ACO. One from life, sponsored by Chris Jones. Richard Boyer, the head of that company, the biggest employer company in Australia, uh, Dankins, magnificent world of the country, American provider, Tank Team, talked at some length about what that meant to him. And then he said, by the way, we've now got 3,300 every 20 employees, and we're going to increase that. That sort of attitude, that driving to the top, and this is your role, Tim. The passion that say, uh, uh, every that much. Did you ever hear Sam a public station who didn't acknowledge the average? I don't think. And the people in that company knew that this mattered because the cost of it mattered. I want to make one or two practical suggestions. Your big system, your system will contain the usual array of attitudes. In this audience, there will be people saying, you know, she's. What nonsense he talks. There will be some of you. I understand that. I understand the range of attitudes that there are in the community. I believe with them as a politician, as a member of this community, for over seven years. The fact of the matter is that within your system, there are people who will be immensely sympathetic and capable of dealing with that. And there will be people who are utterly incompetent. Partly because of attitude, but partly simply they're not that sort of person. That's what it means. And what I would want to say to you is two things. One is that as a system, I think you have to be as understanding as Rio Tito was when they, in 1995, completely changed direction and went from opposing Aboriginal rights in a really powerful way, not as disgusting a way as was mine, but in a powerful way. And a great man. Leon Davis, chief executive, suddenly said, no, this is not right. We're going to work with the Labour Party and against it. What a great moment in my life. But what they said was, listen, our culture is not suited to this. We're actually not equipped to do this job. Because we're in the old culture. And so they put 1,600 of their senior, most senior people through reculture. I said, you've got to learn to think differently. The words have to be different, but the actions have to be different. Now, if that was necessary to buy a company, you might be so rude as to suggest that even an education system may be needed to think about the same industry. For some people, it's a big cultural shift to actually welcome the people, to make them feel at home, to inform that, that prayer. Some people will only say the words. And you have to try and get them to understand that they have to be in their hearts. This is a mind business, but it's also a heart business. And in my view, we as a community still have a long way to go. The endless trail of Aboriginal kids in prison is a sign of people who do not feel part of accepted will accept it in the community uh, who, for a whole lot of reasons, are outsiders and the job of reconciliation is to make sure that nobody is an outsider. So um, I want to say congratulations to the Commission. I thank you all. I thank you for what you have given me and my family. Good lives. Lives we have that everything got that in large part, as I say, from a loving family, but importantly from the system that you serve. What this strategic action, action plan is about is about doing the same for the average of having more employees in Australia. Tim, stretch those efforts. Thank you for setting targets. Make the targets and let this be a living document that grows with every iteration. Thank you.